Today's lesson is on circles and arcs. Take a minute to read over the learning goal and scale. Find where you are on the scale before we begin the lesson. In a plane, a circle is a set of all points that are equidistant from a given point called the center. We name a circle by its center. This is circle P. A diameter is a segment that contains the center of a circle and has both endpoints on the circle. Segment AB is a diameter. A radius is a segment that has one endpoint at the center and the other endpoint on the circle. Segment PC is a radius. Congruent circles have congruent radii. A central angle is an angle whose vertex is the center of the circle. Angle APC is a central angle. We can find the length of part of a circle's circumference by relating it to an angle in the circle. An arc is part of a circle. One type of arc, a semicircle, is half a circle or 180 degrees. A minor arc is smaller than a semicircle or less than 180 degrees. A major arc is larger than a semicircle or greater than 180 degrees. We name a minor arc by its endpoints. This minor arc is called arc RS. We can also call it arc SR. We name a major arc or a semicircle by its endpoints and one other point on the arc. Here we have major arc STR or RTS. This is a semicircle, arc RST. In example A, we will name arcs. For part A, we want to name the minor arcs of circle O. For part B, we want to name the semicircles of circle O. And for part C, we want to name the major arcs of circle O. To make sure I don't miss an arc, I'm going to start with one point. Let's start with point A. Follow that arc along to the first point after point A, point C. Since arc AC is less than 180 degrees, it is a minor arc. For our next arc, I'm going to start again at point A, pass point C, and move on to point E. Since arc ACE is exactly 180 degrees, it is a semicircle. So we will write arc ACE under point B as a semicircle. Again, starting with point A, passing through points C and E and continuing on to point D, we have a major arc because it is larger than 180 degrees. So arc ACD is a major arc. If we start at point A and pass through points C, E, and D, we're back to point A. So now we want to move and start with the arcs that begin with point C. So from point C to point E, we have a minor arc. It is less than 180 degrees. So arc C, E is a minor arc. Starting at point C, passing point E and moving on to point D, we have exactly 180 degrees. So arc C, E, D is a semicircle. Starting again at point C, passing points E and D, moving on to point A, we have a major arc because it is greater than 180 degrees. So arc CEA is a major arc. If we start at point C and pass points E, D, and A, we're back to point C. So now let's move on to the arcs beginning with point E. Our first arc would be point E or arc ED. It is less than 180 degrees, so it is a minor arc. Starting at point E, passing point D and moving on to point A, we have exactly 180 degrees, so arc EDA is a semicircle. Starting at point E, passing points D and A, moving on to point C, we have a major arc. It is greater than 180 degrees, so arc EDC is a major arc. Starting at point E and passing points D, A, and C would lead us back to point E, so let's move on to the arcs beginning at point D. Our first arc, arc D, A, is less than 180 degrees, so it is a minor arc. Starting at point D and moving on to point C, we have exactly 180 degrees, so arc D, A, C is a semicircle. Now starting at point D, moving past points A and C onto point E, we have a major arc because it is larger than 180 degrees. So arc D, A, E is a major arc. Starting at point D, passing points A, C, and E send us back to point D. We have completed naming all of the arcs. 
minor arcs, semicircles, and major arcs of circle O. Pause the video and do U try number one. Since U try number one asks us to list the minor arcs, semicircles, and major arcs of circle A, we are going to start with point P and move to point Q. Since this is less than 180 degrees, arc PQ is a minor arc. Starting from point Q, passing point Q and moving on to point R, we have exactly 180 degrees, so we have a semicircle, arc PQR. Starting at point P and moving around to point S, we have more than 180 degrees, so we have a major arc, arc PQS. Since starting at point P and passing points Q, R, and S send us back to point P, we're going to move on and start with point Q. From point Q to point R, we have a minor arc since it is less than 180 degrees, so we have minor arc QR. Starting at point Q, passing point R and moving on to point S, we have a major arc since it's greater than 180 degrees, so we have major arc QRS. Starting at point Q, moving past points R and S to point P, we have another major arc, so we have major arc Q, R, P. Since starting at point Q and passing points R, S, and P send us back to point Q, we're going to move on and start with point R. Starting from point R to point S, we have a minor arc, arc R, S. Starting at point R, passing through point S and stopping at point P, we have exactly 180 degrees, so we have a semicircle, arc RSP. Starting at point R, passing through points S and P onto point Q is a major arc, so we have major arc RSQ. And since starting at point R, passing through points S, P, and Q send us back to point R, we're going to move on and start with point S. From point S to point P, less than 180 degrees, so we have a minor arc, arc SP. Starting from point S, passing point P onto point Q, still less than 180 degrees, so we have minor arc SQ. Starting at point S, passing points P and Q onto point R, we have a major arc, so major arc SPR. And since starting at point S and passing through points Q, P, Q, and R, we are back at point S, we are completely done with the arcs on circle A. The measure of a minor arc is equal to the measure of its corresponding central angle. Since angle RST is 50 degrees, the measure of arc RT is also 50 degrees. The measure of a major arc is related to the minor arc and the entire circle 360. So the measure of major arc RQT is going to be 360 degrees minus 50, or 310 degrees. The measure of a semicircle is always 180 degrees. Adjacent arcs are arcs of the same circle that have exactly one point in common. We can add the measures of adjacent arcs just like we add the measures of adjacent angles. So arc AB and arc BC are adjacent angles. If I know the measure of arc AB and I know the measure of arc BC, I can find the measure of arc AC. In example two, we will find measures of arcs. What is the measure of each arc in circle O? I'm going to start by finding the measure of arc DA and arc AB. Since arc CDA is a semicircle, because segment CA is a diameter, we know that arc CDA is 180 degrees. Therefore, the measure of arc DA will be 180 degrees minus 58, or 122 degrees. I know also that arc CBA is a semicircle, again, because segment AC is a diameter. So the measure of arc AB will be 180 degrees minus 32 degrees or 148 degrees. Now that we know the measure of the adjacent arcs in circle O, we can go ahead and answer the questions. For question A, what is the measure of arc BC? Since the measure of arc BC is the same as its central angle, we know it is 32 degrees. The measure of arc BD will be the measure of arc BC plus the measure of arc CD, so 32 degrees plus 58 degrees 
or 90 degrees. For part C, the measure of arc ABC will be the measure of arc AB plus the measure of arc BC, 148 plus 32, or 180 degrees. And for part D, the measure of arc AB we have already found to be 148 degrees. Pause the video and do you try number two. What is the measure of each arc in circle O? Let's start by finding the measure of arc RS. Since segment PS is a diameter, we know that arc PRS is 180 degrees. So the measure of arc RS will be 180 degrees minus 77, or 103 degrees. Since arc PQS is a semicircle, we know that the measure of arc PQ will be 180 minus 28 degrees, which is 152 degrees. The measure of arc PR is going to be the same as its central angle, so it is 77 degrees. We know that the measure of arc RS is 103 degrees. The measure of arc PRQ will be 77 degrees plus 103 degrees plus 28 degrees or 208 degrees. And finally, the measure of arc PQR will be 152 degrees plus 28 degrees plus 103 degrees or 283 degrees. The circumference of a circle is the distance around the circle. The number pi is the ratio of the circumference of the circle to its diameter. To find the circumference of a circle, we will use the formula circumference equals pi times the diameter or circumference equals 2 times pi times the radius. Remember, the distance of the radius is half the distance of the diameter. The number pi is irrational. To approximate pi, we use 3.14, 22 over 7, or the pi key on the calculator. Coplanar circles that have the same center are called concentric circles. In example 3, we will find a distance. A 2-foot wide circular track for a camera dolly is set up for a movie scene. The two rails of the track form concentric circles. The radius of the inner track is 8 feet. How much farther does a wheel on the outer rail travel than a wheel on the inner track in one turn? Let's start by finding the circumference of each rail of the track. Since the radius of the inner track is 8 feet, we will use 2 times pi times 8, or 16 pi. Since the outer rail has a radius of 8 plus 2, or 10, we will use the formula 2 times pi times 10 to get a circumference of 20 pi. Since we're looking for the distance or how much farther the outer rail will travel, we want to take 20 pi minus 16 pi for a difference of 4 pi. Go ahead and multiply 4 times pi for a distance of approximately 12.57 feet, which is about 13 feet. Pause the video and do you try number three. A car has a turning radius of 16.1 feet. The distance between the two front tires is 4.7 feet. How much farther does the tire on the outside of a turn travel than the tire on the inside? Let's start first by finding the circumference of the outer tire and the inner tire of the car. The outer tire has a radius of 16.1 feet. So we'll use the formula Circumference equals 2 times pi times 16.1, which is 32.2 pi. For the inner tire, the radius is 16.1 feet minus 4.7, or 11.4 feet. So we will use the formula 2 times pi times 11.4 to get a circumference of 22.8 pi. To find how much farther the outside tire travels than the inside tire, we will subtract 22.8 pi from 32.2 pi to get 9 pi, sorry 9.4 pi. To convert this into feet, we will take 9.4 times pi to get approximately 29.5 feet, which is about 30 feet. 